All right, let's go back. 1987, my mom purchased a brand new Honda CRX. My mom in 1987, she was just 36 years old and she liked a little speed in her car, but the CRX, a sensible car, candy apple red, a little bit sporty, a little bit peppy, a great sound system. And me, a wee lad of 16 years old, I just got my driver's license and my mom being the great mom that she is, she let me drive that car. Now, one month after my mom bought that car, I ran that brand new candy apple red CRX right into a station wagon. She was none too pleased. Let's just say the CRX did not look brand new anymore. And uh, you know how it is. You got that brand new car. You park away from other people. You don't want anybody to scratch it. And you sure don't want your dopey kid running it into a station wagon. That's what happened. It happens in life. And it happened just a couple weeks ago to MSC's brand new cruise ship, the MSC Grandiosa. It's grand. It's new. It, it ran into a pier in Palermo, Sicily. Sideswiped it. Boom. Big dent in the new cruise ship. Now, unfortunately, what I didn't have working in my favor, the MSC has working in their favor, is that they can tell their mom that, hey, look, Carnival, my neighbor down the street, just did the same thing the week before. They ran a couple of their old cruise ships into each other. Now, I did do a video about the two Carnival ships running into each other, and that opened up a whole can of worms in the comments. A lot of people saying, somebody's getting fired. Well, let's unpack it today. There's a few things to talk about. Why these cruise ships are running into stuff. Uh, is anybody getting fired? And finally, who's driving the boat? Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Tony with La Lita Loca, the world's best driver. Thanks so much for stopping by. If you're into cruising content, please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. That way you don't miss out on any of our content. Well, let's unpack all of it. Again, first of all, let's talk about why these cruise ships are running into stuff. In both the instance of the Carnival Glory running into the Carnival Legend and almost the Oasis of the Seas, and the MSC Grandiosa sideswiping the pier or the end of the pier in Palermo, Sicily, in both of those cases, investigations have been launched and the initial findings is that rogue wind or gusts of wind push these cruise ships into places that they did not want to go to. These cruise ships are massively big. They're like floating buildings, and they are affected by wind. Wind can push these ships around, and they are hard to stop. Think about it. Even when you're in your car, which is not a huge cruise ship, a gust of wind will hit you from the side, and it can actually move your car on the road. And it's not that easy to just adjust for that because there's momentum. It's hard to accommodate that momentum. You have to have time to stop and to move and all those things. And that is true for cruise ships. So in both of these instances, the big takeaway is wind. Wind is pushing these cruise ships in a way that they cannot be controlled in a way that, uh, wow, made them hit stuff. <laughs> and, and honestly, that is a little unsettling now. Uh, when you're out in the open ocean, I guess if you get pushed 10 feet one way or 10 feet the other way, no big deal. But in these moments where you are embarking or debarking, uh, if this reality of a gust of wind is, can push you, that's, that's a little unsettling. But let's look at the numbers. Thousands of cruises go off during the year without things being pushed around by the wind. So I, I'm going to chalk this up to, uh, to things that happen because of nature and uh, nothing to worry about. Let's just call it nothing to worry about. Every once in a while it's going to happen, but this is not the norm when it comes to cruising. And number two, somebody is going to get fired. That captain is going to get fired. The interesting thing that not everybody knows is that a lot of times when it comes to docking and undocking the ship, the captain is not even driving. He's not the one that is navigating the ship in and out of port. There is a system called the pilot system. And what that means is the local port will provide somebody who will guide the ship in and out of port. You've probably seen it if you've been on a cruise. A smaller boat will pull alongside the bigger boat. And the first couple times I cruised, I just thought that that boat was guiding them. I didn't know that there was going to be an exchange of people. But that actually happens. Somebody on the smaller boat will get onto the cruise ship. They'll go up to the bridge. And they will actually take control of the cruise ship to guide it into a pier and to guide it out of a pier. There's somebody local with the local port authority. 
And the idea is that they know the waterway. They know where the deep sections are. They know where the shallow sections are. They know where the gotchas are. Their whole job is to move these big cruise ships in and out of the cruise port. It's interesting, uh, the docking and undocking of cruise ships, almost uh, analogous to the takeoff and landing of an airplane, some of the most critical times when operating the cruise ship. Now, we had a really cool experience earlier this year. We got to do a bridge tour on the Celebrity Equinox, and we got to talk to the third officer, Drago. And Drago is from Romania, and he loves being an officer on a cruise ship. And I asked him the question, what is the deal with the pilot? What, what if you run into a pilot who you feel like really can't navigate the cruise ship in a way? Do you take control back over? How does that work? And he explained the process. He said when a pilot comes on board, they set him down, and they asked him to describe the controls so that he can tell them whether or not he knows how to operate the vessel. They also go through a verbal question and answer period where they're essentially interviewing the pilot to see if they are competent enough to control the cruise ship. And during that interview process, during that quiz over the controls, if they feel uneasy at all, they can make the determination that they will actually pilot the ship into the port. Most of the time that doesn't happen, but he did say there has been some occasions where during the docking and undocking period, uh, the captain has stepped in and said, look, you have to move out of the way. We are going to take control of the vessel. At the end of the day, the captain does control the vessel. They control uh, everything about it. They are in charge of all the safety of all the people on board. And so they do have the ability to move the pilot out of the way and take control. But uh, third officer Drago said that that happens very rarely. But I just thought it was fascinating that even before the cruise ship docks, there is this exchange that goes on between the local port authority and the officers on the cruise ship that you're on to make sure that they're keeping you safe and that the person that's bringing you into port uh, has some sort of competency. So in this situation where we say maybe the captain's going to get fired, and I believe both of these situations, the captain was uh, not even in control, that the pilot was in control. So I, the captain's not going to be fired. Again, there are uh, investigations and in both of these cases, uh, the accidents that happened were attributed to wind, not attributed to human error. Now, fortunately, in both of these incidents, there were no major injuries. Uh, the incident between the Carnival Legend and the Carnival Glory, there were six minor injuries. Those people were treated and they were taken care of. Uh, no injuries at all on the MSC Grandiosa. All the ships involved did incur some sort of damage. Uh, the Carnival Glory lost a big section of one of its dining rooms, and uh, they had to patch it up. So where there used to be windows on that ship, uh, they patched it up with sheet metal. It looked pretty good, nice-looking patch job, and uh, at some point it will be restored back to its original design. Uh, minor damage on the Carnival Legend, which was involved, and uh, a nice uh, dent here on the back of the MSC Grandiosa that will have to be buffed out at some time. Maybe they can just buff it out. Uh, that's what I told my mom. Look, I've always been a little uh, bit of a jokester. And uh, when I returned home and uh, the car didn't and they had to tow it off somewhere, I told my mom, maybe they can buff it out. Yeah, uh, look, if you're a kid out there, if you're a teenager and you're wrecking your mom's brand new car, it's not the time for jokes. No jokes. That's a tip from me to you. All right, so nobody's getting fired. I think the comments are funny on those. But yes, another cruise ship uh, running into stuff. Now, the day that we did the bridge tour on the MSC Equinox, we did all kinds of cool stuff. We went behind the scenes at the stage show. Uh, we went into the galley. Uh, I'll leave that video here. I would recommend it to you. It's really some cool looks behind the scenes on a cruise ship. I would invite you to check that out. Thank you so much for stopping by. Please consider subscribing. This is Tony with La Lida Loca. And until the next time... We'll see you on the lead-up.